So today we are going to discuss another easy and simple topic that is the excitation contraction coupling. We are um, discussing a series of lectures about the skeletal muscles. We have already discussed the process of excitation of the skeletal muscles with the help of nerve fibers and we have also discussed the mechanism of contraction of skeletal muscles and the factors which influence the process of contraction of skeletal muscles. But how these two processes are combined with each other, how the excitation combined with the contraction, that process is known as the excitation contraction coupling. And basically there are two very very simple processes involved in the excitation contra contraction coupling. This is a muscle fiber as a whole. And we have already discussed that the whole skeletal muscle com com is composed of different fasciculi, pockets of muscle fibers known as fasciculi. Each, each fasciculus is composed of multiple muscle fibers like this. But each muscle fiber is again composed of myofibrils. So this is a muscle fibers. This is one muscle fiber and it is composed of a lot of myofibril. These myofibrils then are in, in turn made of actin and myosin filaments. And these actin and uh, these are the uh, myosin filaments, the red color and the black colored are the myosin uh, actin filaments. The thick, they are also known as the thick filaments and the actin are no, also known as the thin filaments. We have already discussed that the contraction process occurs only when a lot of calcium comes in and the calcium combines with the head of the cross bridges. This is a cross bridge and here is the head of the cross bridges. Here is the head of cross bridge. When calcium combines with the head of cross bridge, this cross bridge move at this place and in turn move the actin so the actin basically moves and the 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 area between two z lines the 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 area between two z lines which is also known as sarcomere it decreases and that results into contraction but how this process of excitation is combined with the contraction here is the story basically the muscle membrane the membrane of the muscle fiber it has a system of tubules known as transverse tubules or t tubules t shaped tubules known as transverse tubules it is uh, like the inward invagination of the muscle fiber uh, muscle membrane the muscle fiber membrane is basically invaginated inward when a when a nerve fiber brings in electric action potential or stimulus, this basically combines the whole muscle fiber. But to put the action potential or the stimulus inside, deep inside the muscle fiber, we need a tubule known as the T-tubules which helps in the transmission of this signal inside. It will excite the T-tubule and this T tubule will bring the whole signal deep inside the muscle fiber to excite all the myofibrils so that the effect can reach each and every actin and myosin filament. So this is basically the in uh, in uh, in basically the T tubule is just an invagination of the muscle fiber membrane. It is connected with the extracellular fluid and this tubule also contains some uh, this tubule also contains some uh, fluid so when signal comes inward this tubule is then are attached with some uh, special type of endoplasmic reticulum which in the muscle fiber is known as sarcoplasmic reticulum so this blue colored this blue colored material which is attaching with the T tubule from both the sides and discovering the whole muscle fiber this is the sarcoplasmic reticulum this sarcoplasmic reticulum has two components one is the Christi which is attached with the T tubule so this process this area is the Christi of the sarcoplasmic reticulum and it is basically attached with the T tubule and the other are tubules which are spreading deep inside the muscle fiber they have been shown here. This is the T-tubule. 
basically present at the level of muscle fiber membrane or the plasma membrane of the muscle fiber it has invaginated deep inside and inside the muscle fiber it is attached with the sarcoplasmic reticulum so sarcoplasmic reticulum has cristi which are attached with these and it has some tubules which are spreading here and there so that it can cover the whole muscle fiber once the T tubule has been excited to a stimulus that has come from the spinal cord or brain with the, nerve, with the help of some nerve fiber it activates the signal spreads deep inside and it activates the sarcoplasmic reticulum when the sarcoplasmic reticulum is activated it releases a lot of calcium this contains a lot of calcium it is a lot of calcium and this calcium is secreted in the muscle fiber in such a way that it covers all the myofibrils and it reaches all the actin and myosin filaments and they then reach the head of the cross bridge of the myosin filament when they attach with the heads of the cross bridge of the myosin filaments it helps in the contraction and the muscle starts contracting and the muscle starts movement and the process of excitation and contraction excitation contraction come coupling is completed so within a split second the calcium which was released from here is taken up again by the sarcoplasmic reticulum it is taken up again it has some special type a type of transporters which take up uh, the calcium again into the sarcoplasmic reticulum so that it can be used again so here you see a signal is coming and it is reaching the t tubule this is the signal which has reached the t-tubule and it has activated the membrane then with the help of t-tubule it enters deep inside the muscle fiber so if you see it enters deep inside inside the muscle fiber when it reaches the signal reaches deep inside the muscle fiber it activates sarcoplasmic reticulum it activates the sarcoplasmic reticulum here when sarcoplasmic reticulum is activated calcium is secreted the calcium level is increased inside the muscle um, the muscle fiber up to 500 times up to 500 times from the normal level of calcium the normal level of calcium which is not present here it is not sufficient to cause contraction of the myosin and actin but when signal comes it secretes so much calcium that it is sufficient to cause a lot of contraction then this calcium is taken up again and the whole process occurs in 1 by 20th of a second so this whole process the excitation the release of the calcium and then taken uh, taken uh, take up of the calcium again into the sarcoplasmic reticulum this whole process takes about 1 by 20th of a second or a split second or a part of a second in some type of the muscles like the skeletal muscles uh, this may be uh, this in this time may be small but in other type of muscles depending upon the type of muscle like in cardiac muscles this time may be uh, quite large for example it may be like one by third of a second where the contraction lasts a bit longer so the calcium is secreted but is not taken as rapidly as in these skeletal muscles so this is all about the excitation contraction coupling the excitation contraction coupling consists basically of excitation and contraction excitation is with the help of nerve fibers and the signal of the nerve fibers or the stimulus is uh, taken deep inside with the help of t tubules and then this tubule basically activates the sarcoplasmic reticulum sarcoplasmic reticulum secretes calcium calcium causes contraction of the the myosins and actin the thick and thin filaments and it is taken up again and the whole process is occurring in up to 1 by 20th of a second or a part of a second so that's all about the excitation contraction coupling hope you have understood this topic thanks a lot for watching the video